Song of Hiawatha Introduction Should you ask me, whence these stories, whence these legends and traditions, with the odours of the forest, with the dew and damp of meadows, with the curling smoke of wigwams, with the rushing of great rivers, with their frequent repetitions and their wild reverberations, as of thunder in the mountains? I should answer, I should tell you, from the forests and the prairies, from the great lakes of the Northland, from the land of the Ojibways, from the land of the Dakotas, from the mountains, moors and fenlands, where the heron, the Shashagar, feeds among the reeds and rushes. I repeat them as I heard them, from the lips of Nawadaha, the musician, the sweet singer. Should you ask where Nawadaha found these songs, so wild and wayward, found these legends and traditions, I should answer, I should tell you. In the bird's nest of the forest, in the lodges of the beaver, in the hoofprints of the bison, in the eyrie of the eagle. All the wild fowl sang them to him, in the moorlands and the fenlands, in the melancholy marshes. Chetawak the plover sang them, Mang the loon, the wild goose Wawa, the blue heron the Shashagar, and the grouse, the Muskodasa. If still further, you should ask me, saying, Who was Nawadaha? Tell us of this Nawadaha. I should answer your inquiries straightway in such words as follow. In the vale of Torwen Sentha, in the green and silent valley, by the pleasant watercourses, dwelt the singer, Nawadaha. Round about the Indian village spread the meadows and the cornfields, and beyond them stood the forest, stood the groves of singing pine trees, green in summer, white in winter, ever sighing, ever singing. And the pleasant watercourses, you could trace them through the valley, by the rushing in the springtime, by the alders in the summer, by the white fog in the autumn, by the black line in the winter. And beside them dwelt the singer in the vale of Torwen Sentha, in the green and silent valley. There he sang of Hiawatha, sang the song of Hiawatha, sang his wondrous birth and being, how he prayed and how he fasted how he lived and toiled and suffered, that the tribes of men might prosper, that he might advance his people. Ye who love the haunts of nature, love the sunset of the meadows, love the shadow of the forest, love the wind among the branches, and the rain shower, and the snowstorm, and the rushing of great rivers through their palisades of pine trees, and the thunder in the mountains, whose innumerable echoes flap like eagles in their eyries. Listen to these wild traditions, to this song of Hiawatha. Ye who love a nation's legend, love the ballads of a people, that like voices from afar off, call to us to pause and listen, speaking tones so plain and childlike, scarcely can the ear distinguish whether they are sung or spoken. Listen to this Indian legend, to this song of Hiawatha. Ye whose hearts are fresh and simple, who have faith in God and nature, who believe that in all ages every human heart is human, that even in savage bosoms there are longings, yearning strivings, for the good they comprehend not, that the feeble hands and helpless, groping blindly in the darkness, touch God's right hand in that darkness, and are lifted up and strengthened. Listen to this simple story, to this song of Hiawatha. Ye who sometimes, in your rambles, through the green lanes of the country, where the tangled barberry bushes hang their tufts of crimson berries, over stone walls grey with mosses, pause by some neglected graveyard, for a while, to muse and ponder, 
on a half-effaced inscription, written with little skill of songcraft, homely phrases, but each letter, full of hope and yet of heartbreak, full of all the tender pathos of the here and the hereafter. Stay and read this rude inscription, read this song of Hiawatha. <laughs>